Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make my own chalk pastels, my dr own dry pastels. So one of my favorite hobbies or passions is doing large street art um, chalk paintings. And I'm also teaching um, some ancient history art to um, a high school level class and a middle school level class. So I'm going to go through this recipe. I went online, I went on um, Google, and I found this recipe by Marion Body Evans. Um, I will include the link of the recipe uh, below in the, in the description. But I'm going to go over the materials real quickly. Um, there's also many YouTube videos showing you how to do this. Um, so you can also Google that or look that up on YouTube. I'll, maybe I'll add a couple links to other videos. Um, but this is a cheaper version. This is great for like doing in class or doing it with young, young children. Um, you can make this into a more um, professional style pastel with more better ingredients. But these ingredients are very simple, very cheap and easy to have on hand usually. So the first thing you have to do is have a quarter cup of um, some rolled oats or crushed oats. I just use some old fashioned Quaker oats here. Um, so a quarter cup of that. Then you're also going to use a quart, which is four cups of uh, preferably distilled water. So you'll take the four cups and um, the quarter of oats. And what you're going to do is you're going to put the four cups of distilled water in a, in a pot of water, in a pot, and boil it. Um, and then you're going to add your oats, your quarter cup of oats, to the pot and boil that for five minutes. After the water's already been boiled, then you got another five minutes. And then afterwards, you're going to strain out the, the oats, and then you're going to get, uh, you're going to strain out to get the water. So the water is going to be your binder. So to make pastels, you need to have pigment, a binder, and a filler. So this is your binder. Then you need to have uh, two, uh, a couple um, tablespoons of uh, powdered tempera paint. So I have uh, this brand, Colorations. Um, they're about three, three dollars or four dollars. I'll put the Amazon link on them. Um, on Amazon and then I also am using this Jack Richardson um, powder paint um, in white and black and then I have all your primary colors in this coloration so uh, just to let you know on that and then you also want a half a cup of talcum powder or baby powder it says unscented would be better but I did not find it and so this is what I'm using it's like a safe way local grocery store brand um, baby powder um, also the half a cup I did not add a half a cup to each one uh, I like more I would like more pigment than filler so it also says that you know keep a good log in this recipe it says to keep a good log of, of, of the um, amounts that you add because this is also you know it, it it's each recipe, every recipe is different depending on what your materials are. So I went ahead and I measured out two tablespoons of the pigment. So I didn't do it, I didn't add the filler here yet, but I add, I went ahead and added two tablespoons of each pigment into each one of these little cups. And I even have some in the black here too. Then I actually took just a quarter of a cup of the filler so about this much, and I kind of mixed them between two of them um, just to start off with. So this is the first time I've ever been doing this. So it's kind of an experiment. So what I'm gonna do next is I've got the filler in there. I have my talcum powder, all my pigments. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, I think it says on here in the recipe, let's get to it. You just need to start adding a teaspoon at a time Let's get a teaspoon. Here's a teaspoon. A teaspoon of this water. And you want it to be almost kind of like a dough-like consistently. So we'll do the blue here first. 
So I also have some newsprint, uh, newspaper down on my studio. Oh, I, that's like two. I don't know why I was just keep adding it. All right, but we'll just go ahead. It looked like it needed three tables, three teaspoons. So we'll just do three table, three teaspoons. And again, you want it to be somewhat of a doughy consistency. So still, that is still quite dry. So here's four teaspoons and let's do five. And I'm just going to mix this a little bit in here and then I'm going to roll it out. Now I also have um, a transparency um, plastic down here so I can roll it out. And this is looking good. You want it kind of, I'm going to take it out. Oh, try not to get it in other containers. This is just a little container I had. Um, it's very sticky, which is good. I'm going to put it right here. I know that when I do my videos, I chop out my explanation, but I'm not going to do it this video. Okay, that's probably pretty good. And then I'm going to mix this a little bit better because I feel like, and I, so this is how paint is made also, you know, it's just binder and a pigment. So, you know, you could use this for paint. If you didn't want to add much of the filler and stuff, you could make this for paint. Okay, and so, let's see, once we, it's almost like paint, it probably needs a little more filler, but uh, let's see if we can get the rest of this out of here, and I just placed this on my studio table. Okay. So then you want to, I've, I've seen a couple ver versions of, of this, doing this, um, where you could use really thin cardboard, like from, you know, like a cereal box. See, I think this is a little bit, um, almost too liquidy. It's not quite doughy. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of the filler since I didn't use a lot of it. Talcum powder. And I'm going to mix it in here. See if I can get it more of a doughy consistency. And I think that's the the part of this um, process is, you know, maybe in not adding all the, the filler at one time, not adding all the water at the same time, you're doing it in little bits and trying to get this in a consistency like this is getting more doughy here. This is definitely not so. Let's see if I can get some of it off of the spatula here. And I this is just a cheap little spatula. I think I picked up. I think I might even add just a little more. I love this blue color. I love blue on my I I use a lot of blues and purples and stuff in my chalk drawings on the street. So I'm kind of excited to try this and see how they work. And I'm kind of excited to just make my own chalks. I spend so much money on chalk. I love buying uh, Rembrandt chalks and some of the fancier chalks, but they do get super expensive. But I will also say pigment by itself is expensive. All right, so anyways, I saw a couple versions of this. You can, you can, um, I'm thinking that's pretty good. <clears throat> you can use cardboard, but this recipe in particular uses just newsprint paper and they just roll it out. So I grabbed some extra ads from my grocery store and I'm gonna let it be kind of a thicker, I'm just gonna leave two, two pages folded together like this. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to, I hopefully you can see this. I'm going to take this in here and they said to roll it out. So I'm going to grab some gloves. I'm going to be right back. Okay. Now I'm back with some gloves. So I'm going to take this. Oh yes, this is good. So kind of, they said, keep it like a doughy consistency and just roll it out. I probably should roll it out on the plastic like 
this. Just kind of roll it out like some dough here. It might even still be a little too wet, not so solid, but it also takes about 24 hours for this to um, dry. So I'm not gonna wait 24 hours. I have my oven set for 200 degrees right now. So I am just going to actually, you know what? I just need one piece of paper, so. I don't want the two. So we are gonna do this. Anyways, you could also use like a, a really nice piece of cardboard. And just kind of roll this up. Like that. And then I'm gonna chop my ends. A little more. A little more. So you can kind of see it there. And chop it here. And I think I'm just gonna leave it here in the paper. And then I have like, and it said you could chop them in half. So let's just do that. Let's just chop them in half now. Okay. Just kinda maybe, okay. And then I'm just gonna add them in here and I'm just gonna put these in the oven and I will do them for like about 30 minute times and I'll just keep checking them. So then you can, I save these transparencies and I just keep recycling them. I do it with my printmaking. Um, so I'm gonna peel this off and do this again with another color and then I'll show you the end result. So we're, let's do this one more time. Okay, so I just flipped it because it's just newspaper underneath anyways. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the, let's make a, I'm gonna make all of them, but I'm not gonna videotape me making all of them. So how many, that was like five maybe? So let's start with four. So we'll do red here. Let's go one, two teaspoons, three, and I don't think this one has as much filler, four. So that's four teaspoons of the binding, um, uh, what is that? Uh, the binding uh, oatmeal water. Oh, geez. Well, my, now my yellow over there is gonna be a, a little orange, I bet. And that's the thing, you can also um, mix these to make different colors. You can make all the colors you want. It also says in the recipe that you can use dust from like using your other chalks. So save that dust. I never thought of that. I've always kind of tossed them all out, but, and even like the little bits and pieces of chalk, I just kind of like give them to kids or, you know, eventually I either crush them or, and add them. I usually toss them. I, you know, the little shards and bits of chalk, I just don't really want to mess with it. So that's six teaspoons. Again, we're trying to get a clay consistency and I'm just kind of starting to stir it in here first. You could probably just add the ingredients to your table. I think that would be fine too, but you know, I have these little recycled little they usually have these at the grocery store. Um, I saw she also, um, on the website, she um, uses uh, like a muffin, a muffin pan. So that's a good idea too. But I like this because it's recycling and reusing and I can reuse this again for the same colors. So I love to recycle I don't know about you, but I think, you know, not having to go out and buy a bunch of stuff like this really didn't cost. I mean, I'm doing it in huge bulks amounts because I'm teaching 20 students how to do this. So I bought, I'm hoping I bought enough, but I think again, this needs a little more binding. So, um, here's another, I grabbed another. Palette knife here, and we'll just 
to see. So I just kind of, I think the, you know, if you've ever, I know that when I w work with certain chalks, especially cheaper brands, that when you start to use them, you get these little white bits, which is their, their, their filler. You run into these filler bits and it actually is a big, I hate, I actually don't like that. Like, like when you're trying to, you know, I like a very smooth chalk um, without any bits and pieces for one falling out of the chalk or scratching up my drawing on the ground. Those little bits are like, they can be almost like rocks inside the chalks and they just don't help when you're wanting to make things smooth or when you're trying to do a fine line. So you wanna make sure that this is as smooth consistency as possible. I'm also gonna add a little more filler to get it more of a clay consistency. I hope you can hear me okay and see this okay. So thank you for joining me on this um, tutorial on how to make your own chalk pastels. If you have any tips or ideas that I can try, uh, leave them in the comment be comments below. Um, I'm going to roll this one out, throw them in the oven, and I will keep um, checking them every 30 minutes. Um, uh, keep it in the middle. Oh, um, a little more. Like that. Again, just little bits at a time. Uh, the other time, the other things, there's like a gum, it's like a, I can't remember the name of it, you can use. So, some of the tips on this was, um, if your pastels are very crumbly, then you didn't have, your binder was too weak, so I kind of have a feeling this might be the consistency, because... So it's like glue almost, and when I first did it, I didn't use distilled water, and I, I just did it uh, the way um, the Quaker Oats recipe is. <laughs> so I only got like a little bit of water, but it was very thick. So if you're if they're too crumbly and they're not sticking together very well, then it's probably because. Your binder wasn't good enough it was too weak and then the other thing is if your pastels are too hard which probably was like my first version of boiling the oats um, then uh, the binder is too strong so finding that middle ground and this is where you know this is I'm kind of experimenting I think I actually want to do this just a little more um, and getting, oh, I almost broke my uh, spatula here. It's, the more it kind of gets into that doughy consistency, the tougher it's. And it'd probably be better if I taped my, uh, I, I did the first time tape this uh, transparency down, but I didn't do it this time. So I'm just trying to mix this as best as I can but you know as it the binder and the fillers start to dry out a little bit okay I think this is pretty good I'm gonna oh oh well there goes that spatula it still works though <laughs> use everything until you can't use it anymore all right so I'm gonna uh, that works I'm gonna call this good I'm gonna take it and it's gonna have a little blue in it on the outside. Let's see. Okay, that's not bad. I, I don't know what's good or bad, but. All right, so I'm gonna move that out of the way. I'm gonna put my paper down here. Here. I watch a lot of British YouTubers. I don't know why I love them so much, but it's just, 
I love it. I love the British accent. I love their, when they get excited. I just, you know, being an American and I live, you know, I might have an accent, but anyway, so I'm going to roll this up. I like them pretty thick, so a thick roll I think is good. And I think I put a lot of paper on the other one, but I'm going to not do so much this time. I'm trying to keep the blue away. All right, my last little video kind of cut off. I ran out of um, battery. But I'm going to just speed through these. And then I will do a quick little video towards the end, just kind of going through any thoughts or processes. Uh baby wipes keeping a wet rag or some baby wipes on hand to wipe your gloves off between colors so that way you're not going through gloves like crazy because that could add up baby wipes aren't too bad or a rag would probably even be better just another tip
Now to put them in the oven and see how long these take to dry. Normally you would wait 24 hours, you just leave them out and they would dry on their own, but I'm trying to quicken this up, so uh, I'm gonna put them in and check them about every 30 minutes. All right, so um, the chocks have been sitting here for 30 minutes. Well, they already feel kind of dry, but I'm gonna just flip them around. I mean, I had my oven at 200 degrees. I'm try to flip them around. I put wax, I couldn't find parchment paper, so I used wax paper, and I kind of thought that they might stick, but I think with the newspaper it should be okay. Anyways, they're already feeling hard and stiff, but I, yeah, they're not, they're not dry yet. They're still kind of wet, so we're going to let it go for another 30 minutes. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this uh, tutorial about making my own pastel chalks. Um, so I ended up letting uh, the chalks go for another 30 minutes in my oven and um, and then I took them out. I think that was, an, I would not recommend doing it in the oven. I think it just speeds up the drying process and for one it um, really caked on um, the, the newsprint paper, so it's really hard to get the newsprint paper off. I think when you're drying it in that 24 hour period, I would check it after, I don't know, two or three or four hours, maybe even halfway through six, six hours, and maybe try to rip off some of that uh, newsprint paper before it completely dries to the chalks. Um, and I think that a slower drying process might keep them softer. I think with the oven and me, with me, um, drying it so quickly and so hot they really came out super hard they're still soft in the middle and uh, i experimented with this blue on my concrete and once i get the that the the harder outside see like it crumbles real easy so i think my binder was not strong enough and to get a stronger binder you need more uh oats more oatmeal um but even you know the soft little center I could, you know, it, it actually makes a really good mark. I experiment, experimented with it in my on my back porch, and um, I was really impressed with the blue, and I did it with the yellow and the black. I haven't done some of the other colors. I haven't done, but I'll I'll play with those on the sidewalk next week with my students. So, but I just wanted to thank you guys so much for um, joining me today, and I hope that uh, this helps you in making your own pastel chalks. Your, own soft pastels and uh, get creative with me. So have a blessed day and night and afternoon and we'll see you again next time. Thank you again. Make sure to hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Mm, good night.